to review for you a Tefal mini oven. I'll show you the model number very shortly. I've bought this on Amazon for £90. I was going to buy it from Curry's online and that was £120 at Curry's online. So Amazon has undercut them big time. Let's get into the Amazon packaging and have a look at what's inside. Okay, so here we are. So it's a Tefal Optimo 19 litre mini convection oven. Oh, that's the actual box. So I'll get rid of the Amazon packaging. Let's have a look at what we've got here. So it looks pretty good. It's got eight different modes. It goes up to 240 degrees. It's got a timer. It's got a roasting spit, baking tray and reversible grill rack and an interior light. That's not bad for a mini oven to be honest, they're really packing the features in there. So let's get inside it. So the oven is packaged on either side with polystyrene but not on top. It's inside this plastic bag. Carefully as possible get it out. There we go. So I'm just going to put the oven next to the box. So there's a couple of bits and bobs, wire rack, etc. in the box and then with the oven just here in the bag there's a sticker or something on the door and at the side of the packaging this looks like it is the roasting spit. That's just fallen down and then there's this thing here. So I'm guessing that this is something to do with that. So inside the box is this package, it's got the rack, the tray and the instruction manuals and something else just there. We'll have a look at those shortly. And then the only other thing in the box is this here. And this has got something metal inside it. We'll also investigate that in a minute. But for now we can get rid of box number two. So I'm just taking the polystyrene off the sides. And let's get inside the bag itself. So, a pathetic amount of wiring there is probably there's maybe a meter 90 centimeters to a meter that's not going to be too helpful to me to be honest I might need to end up uh, lengthening that myself using uh, one of these things just here and some more wire hopefully not though so let's look at the top of the oven it's got some sellotape on either side just here so that can come off that's to stop the door from opening while it's in transit. And you can see some more tape at the bottom just there. Get that off Open the door. Get the rest of the padding out and then we can have a look inside there. Okay, let's shut that up. Now this is stuck to the door. I do not want this leaving on the door. And it's not the easiest thing to get off, but it, oh, it's going to come now. Right, that's the sticker that was on the window. So it's got 1,380 watt convection, 740 watt roasting spit, 1,380 watt roasting spit, 1,800, sorry, 1,380 watt traditional, 640 watt baking, 740 watt grill, 640 watt bain marie, and a defrost mode. So that is the eight modes. You'll notice that a lot of them are the same, but just different wattage. So I'm just having a look what's in here. So there are some stabby looking things and some screwy looking things in there, as you can see. I'm sure that must be something to do with the chicken rotisserie. Have a look in here. So just taking this lot apart. So instructions, guarantee. It's like a non-stick tray. Packaging cardboard. Grill. So yeah, okay. Let's see how this might figure inside. So what's nice is there are different levels you can have things on. And I think, as I can see, that should be able to go on the bottom. Yeah. So you could have something there. And say, for example, you could have potatoes on there. And then you could have some meat roasting on that one above. So that when the fat drips, it drips onto the potatoes and makes them all lovely and tasty. So these pieces all fit together to make the rotisserie. I shall do that now. 
So I've had to work this out for myself because the instructions don't tell you how to put it together, but it is fairly straightforward when you think about it logically. So this fits in there like so. So on this side, on the right hand side, it slots in. And on the left hand side, it just drops. So it drops onto there and then it slots into there and it will take a chicken up to 750 grams and rotate it and cook it. So there are three dials. You've got your temperature dial and you've got your mode dial just here. So in terms of the quality of the buttons, they feel nice and smooth. That one's obviously got to have a bit more of a click to it for the different modes. And the one underneath is a timer, so I don't know if it's a mechanical timer. Yep, counting down. So that would be quite useful actually if you wanted something to cook for so long. And obviously I've got to wait for that to finish uh, counting down uh, before I can use the oven, but that's just fine. So the maximum countdown you've got is two hours. That's actually quite a useful function, being able to put your oven on. Say for example, I'm going to go out for a walk, I know that this needs to cook for an hour and a half. Bob's your uncle, just leave it. I think that's a pretty good idea, that. I like it. I've had a small oven before like this, but it didn't have that on it, and I can see that being useful to me. Also, just to point out, the reason that I'm reviewing this oven in the first place is that I know that these mini ovens are becoming more popular, particularly with the cost of electricity, cost of living, and all that sort of thing. That is exactly the reason why I've bought it, because I'm putting on a big oven, a huge big oven, for putting in one thing. And it just seems ridiculous so now this is going to be an economizer so i've just put the shelves back in as i'm going to use the oven tonight because i'm going to give it a trial run so i'm going to have it so the heat's coming from the bottom of the oven this is going to act as a drip tray for whatever's on above on the shelf i'm not quite sure what i'm going to make yet i might make some little pizzas but before i go any further i need to have a look around my kitchen and see where this is going to logically fit it's either going to go in my kitchen or in my utility room uh, I need to find a good place for it, so I'll come back to you shortly. Okay, I didn't really want to be cutting the wire on this to extend it, so I've put it there. That's where my uh, tea and coffee and kettle was before, but so I've had a little shifty around, so that's now there. There over there, and the air fryer is now there, but that is without a plug. And that's a cat. As per the instructions, I'm just going to wash down this tray and also this wire rack. I'm pretty sure it doesn't really need doing, but I'm just following what it says to do. So first fail, I was thinking about doing these little mini pizza bases, just got these cheap. I was going to make some pizzas, but can't shut the door. With them on, they're just slightly too big, so I'm going to actually have to trim them. It's a bit of a bodge and a make do and mend, but it'll work. So don't laugh, but that's how I've had to cut my pizza bases so they fit. Right, I've got both my pizzas in. They just fit. There's a couple of millimetres of headroom there. Don't look bad, does it? Right, I'm going to have a drink before I have these, so I'll catch up with you in a little while. And then I'll put the oven on and we'll see what happens. Right, I'm ready for a pizza. Let's get these on. So first of all, I need to put the power on. I want to put this on 190, so round about there. I need this on bottom oven, that's that one, okie dokie. So let's say just over 15 minutes, there's about 20 minutes on the clock there. In fact, a little bit more because it's got to warm up. I like the fact that the lights come on. Let's have a look. Well, mixed results. The top one doesn't seem to have cooked at all very much. So the bottom one, I'm just using another glove. It's cooked a bit, but not enough. No, I'm not massively impressed with that. I think uh, maybe I need to try a higher temperature. So let's have a look at the settings again. Let's go with top and bottom this time. Let's go to 200, 15 minutes. Let's try again. Right, let's have another look. Now it turns out that I was waiting for this cheese to melt, but it's low fat cheese and I've not realized that. So that's probably as good as it's gonna to get to be quite honest. So I can't really judge this fairly on that. I must admit, 
It don't look bad though, does it? Okay, this was the first trial. Let's wait till tomorrow. We'll try something a bit more exotic. See you then. Hey folks, it's the next day. I'm continuing the tea fowl oven review and this time I'm going to have a go at using the rotisserie to cook a chicken. Now before I begin, I think I'm setting myself up to fail here. The rotisserie only holds chickens up to 750 grams in weight according to the instruction books. I've not tested this yet. I cannot buy a chicken that small. This is the smallest chicken in Morrison's and this was 1.1 kilos, so 400 grams overweight. 750 grams is not a chicken weight. You are looking at a chicken leg. So that to me is a token gesture. If it doesn't work, then don't buy this oven if you are looking for a rotisserie mini oven because this is obviously not very good. But I'm going to try it out on a heavier one and see if it does work first. So I've just got a bit of garden string. I'm going to wet this under the tap. And I'm going to tie the legs together because what I don't want to happen is when this is spinning round for the legs to be flopping round and dragging on the side of the oven. I think that will not be a good thing. So I'm going to tie these as firmly together as I can and hopefully they'll stay together. I will say the instruction booklet is pretty poor for this. It doesn't really go into much detail. You've just got to look at pictures. I'm guessing they're trying to get around having to write the instructions in multiple languages, but therefore they're just not very good. So if you are somebody that is a learner through reading, then this, um, again, might not be the product for you. Hopefully this video is helpful though. So that's my chicken now, trust. It looks like it's in some sort of uh, bondage film, 50 shades of chicken. But uh, let's try and get this put together now. I'm gonna pop this end through the chicken. That has to be longer than what the chicken is, otherwise the chicken's gonna drag on the wall. Um, I, I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not, but we'll persist and see. Okay, now I'll get the other one in, in the back side. I'm going to put the screw in on the underside. So there's my chicken. Now, is it going to work? Okay, so I've slotted the right side in there and dropped this one on that side there. The chicken isn't touching the bottom yet, although it's not very far off, I will say. Hmm, I, I just don't know if it's going to work or not. Let's shut the door and see. So this is the rotisserie, the one with the double arrows on it. So I, I can have rotisserie underneath or just on top. I can have underneath and on top or just on top. I'm going to go for just on top to start with. Uh, as I'm testing it out. So it's a chicken, so I'll put the temperature around to 200. And I'm going to put the timer on for one hour to begin with. Now it's moving it round without it touching anything. Oh, that wing's going to start dragging, isn't it? Will it work? I really don't want the wing to be dragging on the wall or the roof. I don't mind it dragging on the tray at the bottom as long as it continues to work. I wonder if I should try tying that wing up. I'll tell you what, I'm going to leave it as is for now and we'll come back to it and have a look in a bit. So just a quick update. It does seem to be struggling a bit as it's going if you just keep watching. It goes but it's not happy. I think what I'm going to do is actually get my scissors out and snip the wings off. That's one. So hopefully that's going to work a bit better now. I'll give you an update in a bit. I'm just going to say that despite my initial scepticism towards this, it's working really well. With a chicken which is bigger than what it said it could do, but still not a full size family chicken.
Okay, I'm ready for the last 45 minutes of cooking. So I'm putting this back to 200 on the grill. But what I've actually realised is it only works when you use the timer. So you can't just have it on and leave it. You've actually got to use the timer for it to work. And I think that's a little bit of a disadvantage. I think you should have a choice of whether you use the timer or not. So I'm going to put this on for 45 minutes. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? Okay, you might notice that I've had a little change of setup. I've put some potatoes at the bottom where the chicken won't hit it. And I've changed the rotisserie to bottom and top heat. So it should cook them from underneath and also on top. Now these are already boiled potatoes, so hopefully this will make them into nice roasters. Well, I've got to say, those potatoes are cooking lovely in there, along with the chicken. Now, the oven is giving a bit of steam out, and if you can see that. But it is steam, it's not smoke, and I can tell you that I know that because the kitchen windows have steamed up. I think this is going to work out quite nicely. OK, this is now finished and done. You'll notice there's a missing potato because I stole it. But the chicken looks really good. Now apparently I need to lift the chicken off using this device, which could be easier said than done, or it could just be easy, I don't know. I've never used one before. Lift and kind of pull. Oh yeah, it comes off. Yeah, got it, got it. There we go, onto the chopping board. Okay, that worked fine. And to be fair, that looks like a really nice roast chicken. A small one, but nice. As for the potatoes, I mean, they're not really roast potatoes, but they weren't in long enough. But fair enough, it's done its job. So the film isn't a recipe film, it's merely to review. And the review is that this has roasted a small chicken very well. This was a 1.1 kilo chicken. The oven said it would go up to 750 grams. It's done more than that. And I'm fairly pleased with the outcome. So it does more than what it says it will do, but it still won't do a big, full, family-sized chicken. So my final thoughts on the Tefal Mini Oven are, it does work really well, it is economical, and I'm glad that I've got it, but it does have some shortcomings. The rotisserie works lovely, but it only takes a small chicken, and that to me is like a significant thing, because if I was buying this for the rotisserie, which I partly was, then realistically, I'd want to be able to put a proper chicken on there. The other point to note is that you have to use this to make the oven work. So if you haven't got the timer on, then the oven doesn't actually work, and that could be inconvenient. But with that said, the timer is also a really useful function if you want to be able to put things on and just disappear and do your own thing. So for what I've paid for it, £90 off Amazon, I'm very happy with it. I'm going to continue to use it, but I realise that I'm not going to be able to put big chickens on there on the rotisserie. I can still roast them on the tray in the oven, so it's not the end of the world. Okay, hope you've enjoyed the review. Catch you on the next film. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. 
And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.